married once there and once in Chilton. As most of you know, to the new people, I've been married twice. I lost my first wife to cancer, and then I met Paul's mother and met her and married her. And so I married, a, I think it's now 48 and 11, so that's 59 for 60 years, but it took two women to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always been a member of Potter Church, and I'm proud to say that, that I am very glad that I am there. But I was baptized there, I was confirmed there, and I was buried there, and I'll be buried there. But um, over the years, I've been on the consistory twice, and you fellows now don't know how lucky you are to be on the consistory when you got a pastor like Mark. Thank you, Will. There's someone here that know different, like Gwyn Casper and a few of the older ones. So uh, as far as funny stories, um, I think some of the new people don't know, I think it was brought up, Wanda brought it up this morning, the church was turned around. Merlin Weeding, who was Evie's husband, was Evie's husband, but in all the children's father, uh, had a wild dream. He had a lot of wild dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a good one. And he said, we're going to reverse our church. So as our older people know, and the new people don't know, that where the pulpit is now is where we came in. And we had a balcony over that. And there were certain people that aren't here anymore that used to sit up in that balcony and watch everybody that come in. And I think they took a, a little check mark here if you came or you didn't come. Because they knew everybody that was in church that Sunday and they knew everybody that wasn't there. And uh, in the front, uh, where we came, come in the back, that's where the pulpit was. There was a room on each side. And I still remember Harvey Hartz pumping on the pipe organ. He had to pump that or use your feet, and whoever played that, I don't remember. But uh, um, Sunday school teachers I had was Leah Dunkel and, and Mrs. Dunkel, Mrs. George Dunkel. I forgot her first name, but she was one of my teachers. So I've been there a long time. Been on the consistory twice, and one of the greatest things that was on is on the search committee when we found Mark Axelrod. And the night we met, uh, we were looking over all the resumes, and I believe that's what they call them. And I got to Mark Axelrod's resume, and I looked at that, and I pushed it to the side. This guy had straight A's and everything. He was super and everything. And I said, anybody that's that intelligent won't be able to get up in the pulpit and preach to me because I only had a high school education. I'll never be able to understand him. But then we talked to a few of his professors, and they said, don't worry about that. He's down here as guy. So we looked at that and looked at that, and we said, I think we should give him a call. So the search committee, which was, uh, I think I remember a few on there, was Don Duca. Wow. Gene over here. Uh, okay. Oh, you Barb. Uh, Doug Stecker was on there, wasn't he? No. Yep. Well, anyhow, we suggested that we call, give him a call. And I, as I was retired at the time, they said, Wilmer, you and Jeanette go up and meet Mark Axelrod at the airport. Bring him down here for his interview. So here's the airplane landed, people were coming off, no, no Mark Axelrod. The last guy to come off, he was coming, you know, he had hair then. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a nervous guy, I'll tell you, he was nervous. I never saw anything like that, maybe a cat on a hot tin roof trying to walk. <laughs> he was one nervous cat. And I said, just calm down, Mark. I said, this is okay, we're gonna just have a real easy, he says, the thing I don't like, I don't like to fly. That was one thing. I'm nervous about flying. And he said, I forgot my belt. <laughs> I said, don't worry about that. We'll find you one if you need one. <laughs> this is true, Mark, right? <laughs> well, anyhow, we took him back. We had the interview. And while we went in together and had Mark take a leave, 
my wife took him around, showed him the parsonage, which was the old parsonage, and showed him all the Sunday school rooms. He was pretty impressed. On the way back, we got talking so bad, I went right past the, the to turn off to get to the airport and barely made it back, but we got it back. But anyhow, after that, uh, I was on the parsonage committee to build a parsonage, which was a great thing. And uh, I've had a wonderful, wonderful experience at Potter. I'm so glad. I don't know if I can get through this, but Mark and me are the top people on their wedding day. Jeanette and I couldn't come. She was very sick. On that night, the telephone rang. It was Mark. He said, we'd like to come out and see it. So they came out and visited us on their wedding night to visit Jeanette and I. And I think that's the most class thing that any pastor could do. And I'll never forget you, Jeannie. Also, Mark gave me a lot of help. It took me a long time to get over Jeanette's death. And he came out and visited me. And we had dinner together quite a few times. And he helped me get through it. And now that I met Faye, we've had 11 wonderful years together. And I got new sons like Paul. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the most wonderful thing is our families get along to good. Sandy is my daughter now, and uh, it's been wonderful. So we got over the tough times, and now it's the happy times again, and I enjoy it. But I want to especially say thanks to Mark and Jeannie. We all don't know how lucky we are. And Mark said to me once, I hope I can retire in Potter. And I said, you won't have any problem. <laughs> Stay <laughs> right you. here we are. We'll be happy for you. So that's about all I have to say for that. But, I, one more story. <laughs> um, I, I'm not always this serious. I'm full of fun. And uh, somebody brought a poppy seed tort tur quite a few years ago in our church for a funeral. And I said, if I knew who brought that poppy seed tort, I'd give him a kiss. And who was it? It was Anna Wenzel. And that's Beverly Bowman's mother. So I give her a little hug and I give her a little pick on the cheek. So the next time we had a funeral, we had seven ladies lined up. <laughs> well, I don't think this is going to come as a surprise, because you know her real well, that was Evie Weeding. Evie Weeding was the number one lady. So I give her a little hug, and I give her a little pick on the cheek, and she said, guess what, I didn't bring any poppies. <laughs> Seven, there was only three of them that brought a poppy seed. Remember that, Eddie? Really? Yeah. So it hasn't always been serious. It's been a lot of fun. So I'm sorry that I broke down, but uh, it gets home when I talk about it. So thank you very much.